Good day. We're starting our look at solutions quantitatively and we started with some pretty easy notes. Might look exotic, but not too difficult. We will talk about things called stock solutions and those are going to be concentrated solutions, high molarity, and we store those often in the back room. And when we make up solutions in a lab, if they're already from a liquid form, we just simply add the right amount of water to dilute it. We have a formula down here that says C1V1 equals C2V2. From our section on the mole, you should know that N, number of moles, equals C times V, the concentration times the volume. So moles are conserved when we dilute a solution, going from one set of conditions to another. Now you might say, why do we have ones? Well, one means what we're starting with, and two represents the solution we finish with. If you don't like that, a lot of times people use I and F for initial and final. But anyways, these things are inversely related. The higher the concentration, the smaller the volume, the lower the concentration, the bigger the volume. So let's try some sample questions and see what trouble we get into. It's really important to be organized when I'm doing this, and that means identifying the variables. So we're saying we have concentrated hydrochloric acid is 12.4 molar. So that's what is when we get it. Give you a nasty burn if you get it on your hands, nasty vapors. So we want to know the volume of that. Then we're going to need to make two liters of just 0.25 m. Now it doesn't matter what we call one and two, as long as we get things paired off right. So I'm going to say that C1 is 12.4 molar. And I'm going to say that C2 is 0.25 molar. Then I'm going to say V1 is the unknown because I want to figure out that volume. And V2 is 2.00 liters. So I have C1 V1 equals C2 V2. And the dog is unimpressed by this. And V1 rearranging. Well, the C1 just has to hop. When it goes across the equal sign, it hops to the bottom. So now I have the right formula for this. And I simply plug in these numbers in the right spots. So you'll see I had my C2, 0.250M. I had my 2 liters, went here. And I divide by my 12.4M. I get 0 0.0403 liters. And you can stop there. It didn't say it wants it in milliliters. But if you're ambitious, you can convert to milliliters. So when you're diluting down, this refers to the total volume. We have another example to try, and here we have some glacial acetic acid that's 17.4 big M, and it says what's the molar concentration for a 5% solution, 200 mils, blah, blah, blah. So again, we have to do our identifying things. We said C1 is 17.4, and we are told that we use 200 mils of the concentrated, so we go 0 0.200 liters. We want to know the final concentration. That's why we put question mark there. And we know we want 4 liters of it. So we rearrange our equation. C2, we can see the V2 has to get on the other side because we're isolating the C2. So the V2 has to go on the bottom. Makes sense. The volumes will divide out and we'll get concentration in our final answer. We substitute in these numbers into this formula that we derived. And we go boom times boom divided by bam. And we get BIM, 0 0.870 molar. And you can see, we've diluted a fair ways. So going from 200 to 400, well, you can see we've diluted it by a factor of 20. So in fact, if we took 17.4 and divided by 20, we should arrive at that number there. So anyways, the magic formula in this little section, when you see dilution questions, C1V1 equals C2V2. Make sure you're identifying all of the variables, rearranging the formula first. Often I'll see people try plugging it in there and they do it wrong. Rearrange first, then substitute, get your answer, no sweat.